got to portray us how we want to be portrayed. And if we want to be portrayed as such and such, you've got to put it across like that. You can't say, we don't think you're really like that, we think you're like this. You yeah. shouldn't do If we say, we definitely want this bit on, like if I said this bit now, I definitely want this on, you should put it on. Uh, because that's what we on. want. We, we want to come across how we are. We are what, we are, what we've been tonight. That one in, in that room with white walls and cider. That's one side that was getting alcohol, drunk, but that was stupid filming as then, really, but it's as our fault as so much as anybody. Have this white side pack meeting. Just out of town, up on the valley side, live the Byrne family, civil servants with an alternative view. They talk about the bad old days of poverty and war. But what have they given us instead? The telly and the car. Mindless rubbish and motorway crashes. Oh, what have we become? We've got a shorter working week. But now we've got no home. Oh, misty mornings. We'd like to live like the good life in a, a very modest way. I'm very dissatisfied with the the way the country is governed at present. There seems to be a, an element of hopelessness about which is unrelieved. Economic gloom, unemployment. Nobody seems to be coming up with any real answers. I think there's platitudes and very little else. There's no answer coming apart from the usual selection from the politician's checklist of excuses, starting with world recession and exchange rates and the rest of it. There seems to be no attempt to solve problems in the country itself. And though the town is clean and bright, its heart is cold as clay. Well, we can see how the policies um, directly affect people because we're dealing with their tax problems. We're both in the civil service and um, we can see at first hand the effects of unemployment. Nobody can pretend what the statistics are to us because we see the P45s coming in when there's a, a local firm makes everyone redundant. How's it going? Oh, slow progress. Slow progress. 35,000 people in Cornwall have their water supply cut. President Reagan tells Americans about his efforts for peace and to help the US economy. But world reaction hits the dollar and helps push up the pound. Can you pour the tea? Yeah. Did you hear the news tonight, Chris? Was there any warning about boiling water here yet? It said in the regional news that um, in most of Lancashire and that, they had to boil water, including Rossendale Valley, where we are. Oh, well, it's getting close then, isn't it? I suppose we'd better do it to be on the safe side. Reasonable yeah. precautions to take. Mm. We may as well get a big pay rise. Otherwise, we're just going to have to go through another strike again sometime in the next year. Well, I think you're quite right. Mm. But they've done it the right way, though. They've done what the government wanted, and they've balloted the members, and they've got all the opinions, yeah. and they're quite entitled to go for comparability with, with the other public utilities. Well, right, inflation may be going down now. How can you start up factories? How can we start up steel mills that have been closed? You can't, because the steel mills that have closed are just dismantled, mm. thrown away for scrap and um, you just can't start. So if there's an extra demand for steel in this country because manufacturers are getting th better orders, they'll have to go abroad for the steel and the steel industry is going to suffer even more. They'll spend it on daft things like Trident and in the Falklands, but when it comes to British industry and building a thing up, nothing, no it's nasty work, it's public it's expenditure. Work, I mean, yes. what's, the, what's the future going to be for these two? You know. Yeah, well, these kids could be on the dole or effectively <clears throat> very poorly employed for the rest of their life. I may, I may not be suitable for pilot training, in which case I'd try and go into the engineering side, and, but um, even even so, I may, mm. I may not have the qualifications or the brains to do that, mm. and I don't know where I would be then, you know. No. Um, that was the prospect going to be affected as well by new technology, because um, <coughs> depending on the degree of introduction of this, there are bound to be fewer jobs about. 
if new technology goes ahead as people expect it yeah. to do. And you cannot just say, oh, this man is a computer expert, we must pay him 50,000 a year or whatever, and leave the rest of the people on the dole. You cannot have a new technology elite created. No and just left because that's the path of revolution and you, that cannot come about. No. Mrs Thatcher said this uh, at the, the conference in Bryan, the last party conference. She was talking about us being in business, as it were, to plant trees for our grandchildren and their children. We're talking about building something which is not going to be have an immediate effect in terms of reducing the rate of unemployment, but uh, building a sound basis upon which we can build a future which will offer an opportunity. It's all very well to turn around and say, we're planting trees for the future and for our children and their children. What are we doing about the people in the middle? Those people who at the moment are unemployed of our age group, who have no hope at all of finding a job as far as they can see. It's a waste of human resources. It's like leaving money in, in, under your bed, isn't it? Mm. You're not using that resource. Surely it's a problem which has been brought on over a number of years where we haven't been training people for the right skills. Mm. And the right skills these days in the microchip technology of computing, advanced maths, these sort of things, not, not the, uh, the traditional apprenticeship which, which a lot of people went through. That's not bad, this. The country as a whole has come through the worst of the recession now, and I think you've got to accept that. But unfortunately, the people who should have borne the brunt of the recession, mm. i.e. the public, public sector, sector who have cut out yeah. on the waste mm. rather than jobs, absolutely. are the people who have not suffered, and it's private industry that has carried this country on its backs. The only thing that the man in the street can do is help himself. You know, uh, whether he, um, he starts some sort of a small industry up or um, some sort of a round, you know, he's only going around with a a bread van or selling potatoes, he's, at least he's working and he's working for himself because I think that no one else is going to help him, he's got to help himself. And we've got to retrain these people into productive jobs and perhaps that's not what we're, what we're doing at the moment. What we've got to do is train them into the new skills in the new society. Things have to improve but uh, at the cost of, um, of a lot of people's jobs, a lot of, um, a lot of people's lives, you know, people are going to uh, they're going to be committing suicide and, and all sorts of things because they're so uh -huh. impressed with the situation. But the people in the traditional industries are pricing themselves out of jobs. There's no good training for 12 months and then saying, well, sorry, there's no jobs for you, we're going to throw you out. You can't do something like this in 12 months, can you? You simply can't do it. It's not possible for us to restructure the, 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 the economy in order to... The, the, the immense amount of work that's required to do this is a 10-year job. Well, in 10 years' time... I can't really, we well, can't really say really, can you, because uh, the new age, you know, have computers, they want all the young ones, won't they? And I'll be, well, I'll be older and uh, <laughs> they want all the young ones, you see? So I think I'll be able to scrap it myself. We've now, now reached the, the state where, for, for once, we're actually pricing labour at a realistic uh, level. The, you know, the, the increases in wages over the last few months have, have levelled off down. Mm. And, you know, this, this is, can only be but good. There's going to be trouble on the streets eventually, probably. It's just uh, to start having groups, meetings, people unemployed, getting all together. They'll start taking action themselves, probably. Well, we hope they will. Because we can't all just stay on the door for the next ten years, can we? Please, sir. Here. Oh, man. Sir. Heard. Whitehead. Yeah. Kneeled. Yeah. Last one. That must be me. Okay. Uh. <laughs> yes, and they're well overdue. Doesn't seem any reason. Trust the king. John Franken towards the far left of the picture on Sheba's Boy. Mr. Pitt in the centre, that white snip on his nose, and Royal inside Sheba's Boy down to the lead for Mr. Pitt. Two miles, we're all right, dear Ted. Seven to one, there. Look at that flight. 
Frost the King, yeah! yeah. yeah. Frost the King, yeah! What about Cork Same flow. image. An HK gambler getting into the picture and cocaine running round the outside of them. Just the king. Just the king. How was your feeling? I'm laughing. No, no. It's either up or down this arm. It's a tip. <laughs> Just the king's gone on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's gone on. Trust the King landed in the lead from Military Band in second, and then Chiba's boy, H and K Gambler, very close to them, and then Cocaine just Come getting behind on, them. Come on, Cocaine! Behind them. Yeah, I'm gonna bloody cheer if this wins. <laughs> <laughs> Trust the King, though, in the lead from Military Bound and Chiba's Boy. Then Cocaine making ground still on the outside behind them. Racing to the... It's gonna do it. As they come down to the second last flight. Trust the King from Military Bound, the finish rover on the far side. Cocaine just in behind them. Trust the King is going to land in the lead from Military Bound and... Oh, he nearly! ...towards the final flight now. And then Bow Ranger. But it's Trust the King in the lead from Cocaine. Then comes Military Bound over the last. Trust the King lands in the lead from Cocaine. Second Military Bound. Trust the King. Cocaine, but Trust the King holding cocaine. Goal! Left the line, Trust the King is the winner, and Cocaine is second. One of the prides of Darwin is its band. Its conductor is trombonist and bricklayer Gordon Clough. Right, let's have a bash and see what happens, shall we? That dynamic as well. Okay, too loud before. The band is rehearsing for the national championship, an event we hope to film and they win. But it's early days. We're getting it once more. It's a little bit falls under us, and we don't want that. So the dynamic and let's have the dim afterwards. Beginning once more. Still not in tune there, still not in tune. Can we have big glasses now, please, lads? We're yeah. all empty. Yeah. 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 Millie Dean is the lady we filmed last week under the hairdryer. She has just forgiven us. Her husband is Bill, landlord of the new inn. And I've mostly been uh, manager. It's 17 and a half years. It's only the last three and a half years that I've actually been. Uh, a tenant, which is always the ambition of a manager to have a tenant in a house. Have you no home to go to? And as far as the clientele I get in here, it's um, from a millionaire to a man that drinks wine. Oh, very, very cosmopolitan. I, d I don't want no toffs coming here. I don't want none of this swanky panky idea. I'd soon have just a common, you know, the pe average people that come in. But I do get uh, all the classes, all the different classes of people. Bill and Millie hope soon to retire to Mallorca. But first, Millie must undergo a serious operation. Across the road in a council masonette live another couple with a medical worry. Miriam is severely handicapped and Bob, an ex-miner, is afflicted by spinal arthritis. Housebound, Miriam organizes a voluntary taxi service for the sick and their relatives, something needed in an area suffering poor public transport and national health cutbacks. I wonder what's on now. What are you doing in the kitchen? No. Huh? No. Despite her handicap, Miriam is something of a sergeant major. I want to come in and get some. Well, it's all right. Hello, 
love. It's about your journey tomorrow, love, to Queen's Park. You think you can do it? Uh, just hold on a minute, love, and I'll give you details. Um, what are you doing Paris for? For my French project. And she's going mm. up to Queen's Park. For my exam. Park. Right, love. Right, thank you. Bye. That's another straightened off. She's 90, isn't she, that one? 92. 92. 92. <laughs> She's down, isn't she? Bruno. Bruno. Keep the cat calm. <laughs> it's got nicotine in your, your blood vessels in your legs, it's closing up. He said, and that's why your blood's not going in. He said, if you don't give her a smoke, he says, uh, I'm afraid, he says, you'll be in the ward up there. He says, there'll be no legs in. He says, what's that, doctor? He says, gangrene. He says, if you don't get no blood in your legs, he says, it's like gangrene. Like frightened me. Oh, well, this is it. I said, it's frightened me. And he gave me tablets like to kill cramp. He said, you can make nicotine in your legs, you know. Well, this is it. It's not surprising where it does get. But it frightened me, you know, it's all... How are you? Oh, I'm um, not so bad, really, Bob. No, I'm no, very... Have you not been taking to... in for a bit? Yeah, 12 years ago I had the yeah, valve, yeah, yeah. my heart valve done. Yeah. Now yeah. it's blocked again, so yeah. I've got to have that out in a plastic one. blocked again? Yeah. 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 I've got to get a plastic one put in, so I'm mm -hmm. keeping my fingers crossed. I can go mm -hmm. in March, he'll uh, get me, a, you know, an appointment into Blackpool oh, mm. and get it done, get it over with. Mm. There is a wide range of words used by men to describe women or girls who like to have sex and like to have more than one lover. Uh, there are words like slut, old bag, whore, a whole range of words of this kind which are really very insulting. She's fine to death at her husband. She thinks she's off having sex. What does she know? She's only just presuming that. Everybody got married, really. So in case they got pregnant, didn't they? When you were bringing your children up, if you can talk to them openly, which they didn't used to, did they? No. I mean, we're all oh sure, she don't tell daddy. If you can tell them openly, obviously when they get older, they will tell you these things. I think I would rather Sandra come yeah. to me and told me she wants to go on the pill than her coming to me and saying I'm pregnant. What can I do? That's the idea. Because it's too early once they're pregnant. When I was 16 and I'd started going out with Dave, that we're talking different things, because I went and told my mum that I wanted to go. You went straight to the doctor? And I had a, I had a talk, I'd talk with my mum and discussed it, and then I just went down to the doctors and it were, everything was all right, you see. Well, my idea, you couldn't just go to the doctor without your doctor thinking, yeah. When I did go to the doctors, he asked me then again if, if, I'd, uh, if I'd asked my mum and talked with my mum. And I said that I had, so he, he did give me the pill. But every time I went after that, he was always asking me if I got married or if I got a ring on my finger, as if it weren't right to be on the pill when you're not married. I think they thought we were having a big problem, that I was going private. Now this went on for about a couple of months. But I think that delay was because They'd found out it was going on National Health oh, instead uh, of uh, going uh, private yeah, to me, yeah. you know. A uh, friend of ours, he went to uh, uh, she varicous veins, you know. Yes. And she went in as a, and oh, she was a specialist, and he had a two-year waiting list. Her husband says, well, we'll go private, you know, I'll we'll get yes, the savings yeah. out and go we'll yes. private. She went in the week. On the same doctor, oh, same specialist, same said. specialist, oh, did it in the week. Prescription charges are going up again in April. It's the fifth increase since the Conservatives took office. They'll rise by 10 pence to £1.40 for each item. Last April, charges rose by 30%. Is that you, Bob? Yes, yeah, that's me. Yeah. And if you try and find an insulting word for a man who likes having sex and has a lot of love... Anybody in today? Um, no, I'm not any. Irish any better? Well, just say it, Millie. Just say it. I don't think it's weird. No different than she gets her operation or something. No. Um, What's on? It's all right for adults, if you like that kind of thing. Oh, I've always been on the floor, isn't it? Well, there's... Uh, Symbol. Oh, it's a, yeah, sex symbol. Ah, it's a book calling. Yeah. What? <laughs> it's a book calling, you say. <laughs> 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 <laughs
beat me and my work, we both work, and then we pay a lot. And last year she had to have a, she couldn't walk hardly with a cartilage. So the doctor put her on tablets. I said, tablets will never cure a cartilage as long as we live. And she was in agony for weeks and weeks. So I said, go and tell your doctor you want to see a specialist. So the doctor said, well, I'll get you to see a specialist. This specialist couldn't see her for 12 months. And I personally paid this week 19 pound on national insurance. 19 pound on in one week. And she pays a dollar out of her wage. And you can't get in hospital. But if you pay, you can. Radio ham Bill Lishman lives here with his wife, Pauline, a gentle self-portrait that belies her firmness. I think I'd start at top because it's easier than starting at bottom. I'd start at top and shoot the Prime Minister. No, not really, because I wouldn't hurt anybody, really. No, I don't reckon much of it, and I don't think anybody else does, really. The people that they ask about Maggie Thatcher are people who they know are Conservatives, are. Conservative liberals. Don't stop that, Darren. Well, I think so anyway. I don't think uh, if you go in a post office and stand in the post office behind all pensioners, you can talk to them there, and you'll find out that every single one of them are complaining. But they don't really think the government is a good government because it isn't. Because everybody is either out to work, or they're worried about their jobs and they're frightened of losing their jobs, so they're keeping quiet. About everything, really. RG3 Bravo, Victor Tango, G2 Alpha, Kilo Kilo. So it's not a good government, but I've always said so. And it's women that's put her there. Not me, but <laughs> women's put her there. Three Baker, Victor Tango, 2 Alpha, Kilo Kilo. Bill is just home from a spell in hospital. The NHS are catching out quite a bit on this, and I think they're beginning, really beginning to feel the pinch. Uh, for a start, of course, in food. Uh, I was down four, about four years ago. And there's a different quality of food now than what there was four years ago. That seems to have deteriorated a little bit. Could you mic on my cigarettes, is this woman? Hey? Could you mic on my cigarettes? I haven't. I've got you 140. What are you on? Right, thank that? you. Well, you only got six. Where's the other one? It's probably in here. I'll go and look again. Talking to various nurses, they said, well, we're having to struggle occasionally to get what we want uh, for things like leaning and things of this character, uh, which, in my estimation, we shouldn't. Uh, be in a situation in hospitals having I mean, to do anything like this. It should be there. If people need it, it should be there. It should be based on what people need, not on what it costs to do it. I think that there, there has been a, a, an attempt to... There's been privatisation in various fields. We've seen attempts at privatisation. We've seen privatisation still going on. And I think that the... Pri some of the private situations <coughs> have been encouraged in the NHS by basic in the by, by basically a general tendency to run down to give the private angles a chance to get in on this. I mean, all right, we've seen adverts stuck all over the place for Bupa. We've seen the situation of employers offering this as part of part of trade union deals in some cases. We've actually seen trade unions accepting these kind of deals. Which to me, I think this is very regrettable because it is all a tendency to run down the National Health Service. And I think if an Iron Bevin came back, there'd be one or two people shot. <laughs> Someone determined to make a little go a long way is Juliet Neild, a domiciliary handicraft teacher. Using bits and pieces, begged, borrowed, but never stolen, and a limited budget from social services, Juliet espouses the policy of self-help. People that have had disability put upon them suddenly feel a great lack of confidence. They can't do what they used to do, so they think they can't do anything for quite a long time. My job is really more to give them back confidence in actual day-to-day -day living than to teach them how to do tapestry or embroidery. In reality, it is more day-to-day -day living problems. Often people just want somebody to talk to, somebody that isn't involved, like a social worker is involved in their, in their case. Um, I'm an outside interest, which, you know, that, that suits me, and if it suits them, then we're all happy. Morning, Morning. ladies. Hello. Morning. 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 Oh, it's lovely, Miss Bolton. Isn't it? Mm. I brought it down. I thought that would look nice to cover it. the top of a, a foot, foot, foot stool. You know, for foot, oh, yeah. foot stools, you see. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. 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 Oh,
The closure of New Berry Mill means 2,000 Northwest jobs lost in the past 12 months. That's 20% of the region's paper and board industry. Wigan Teep are the third in a fortnight. Six days ago, Thames Board made 800 redundant in Warrington. For the Neils, another closure is bad news. David's work is servicing the paper industry. With jobs insecure, every decision needs careful thought. So do you think we can afford a, a, another one, or do you think we'd have to hire one? I think it probably depends on how much the, the amount comes to, you know. George is talking to you, you know, roughly 300 pounds. Well, mm. it's like a lot of pennies, you know, I'd have to spread it over. Is that to you? I don't want to do that. Well, then you have the option of either grin and burn it for a little while longer and save up, or rent it. Come on, Is he not fair? No. Come on, we're fortunate. We were safe inside the ark when the lander turned to most no status from the flood. Because he'd done as he was told, we were safe inside the hole. He let us in just two by two until the ark looked like a safe. And now good children everywhere. You will, will always care for all we creatures, great and small, but no one's safe to see you all. Give us a kiss. What we're, we have due in will carry us through until end of February, March, and the people, the customers who are coming up should hopefully, if they place designs, extend the work through into April. And um, hopefully a bit into May. The CBI warns the water workers they're putting jobs at risk. But as time goes on, week after week, we're going to get more burst pipes and we're going to get more and more disruption for industry. And I tell you, in some cases, some of those uh, companies that are being closed down for this won't be opening again. Yeah, but at the end of the day, David, do you think there's anything gained by it? I mean, look how many times recently, in particular, people have been on strike for weeks and weeks and weeks and at the end of the day, they've had to settle. It comes down to the economics, doesn't it, when they have had to settle? Would you go on strike just for more money? Well, basically, we can't afford to go on strike. Three kids, you, you know, it's hard work, isn't it? Yeah, but that's, that's not really what I asked you, is it? It's not whether you're well, you're not to, what, do you, what do you think about going on strike? Well, there wasn't that much option if you were told to go on strike, that's it. A lot of these blokes and women, they have families and they can't afford to go on strike. Yeah. But it's these, these union go. men that get all the money for doing this job to get, to get them more money. I mean, they're not bothering because their pockets are still full of money, aren't they? Are they then actually consulted at every step? Or do they or do they leave it to their shop steward? If they're balloted and there's a three to one majority for a strike, well, it's yes, like hard luck, isn't it? The other third have to grin and bear it. These uh, sewer workers are all, um, they're more like in uh, for people's health. And if the water goes, uh, uh, disease or anything like that, we're all going to be ill, aren't we? And then we'll need nurses to look after us. Oh, but and how much is it going to cost taxpayers oh. then? Hey!